<clears throat> Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading in verse 52. John chapter 6, and beginning in verse 52. The Bible says, The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, and even me shall live, and even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, but he that eateth of this bread <coughs> shall live forever. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We thank you for your goodness and your watch care. <coughs> God, we pray that this word would be used to your glory this morning, that it would be used to your honor. Lord, that we, whatever the Word of God says, Lord, that we might stand by it. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now, we have maybe not so familiar verses of Scripture. I've read them many times, but I've used this particular Bible, I think, for about 12 or 13 years, and I mark scriptures as I go. I hear them preach or I hear them talk. If they're reviewed, I mark them. And besides of one, uh, I've never heard this preached in 13 years. There's one verse that was used by someone else, and that's it. Uh, and one reason, uh, some people find this verse offensive. Uh, one thing, uh, the Jews uh, uh, take their doctrine, I mean, excuse me, not the Jews, the Romans take their doctrine, the Catholics take their doctrine as transubstitution from this verse, that, that they literally are eating and drinking the blood of yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think sometimes the reason it's avoided is because we don't know how to explain that. Uh, but my point is, when you take this literally, and we're going to look at this literally as the Jews did, because the Jews was, was dumbfounded by it, some verses are offensive. Now, we can take it for what we say, but we have read verses indeed, at least to the flesh, that are offensive. And if we stay in the flesh, they'll always be offensive. And if we don't take them in the spirit, that, you know, this is, this is the end of the whole matter. The Word of God is right, and you're wrong. That, that's all that you can come down to, whether it offends or if it's good or bad to the flesh. At the end of the day, the Word of God is always right. And, and we have to embrace that if we're to be uh, the church that the Lord would uh, that would, the Lord would magnify, then we have to be that way. But we're going to pick out pieces of this that the Jews found offensive, and sometimes we might as well. Uh, beginning in verse 52, it says, The Jews therefore strove among themselves. Now, the Jewish people were a people that liked to fight. They were a people that liked to argue at the very least. There were, uh, there were the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Uh, uh, then, as Brother Jarrett was talking, there were the Samaritans that were uh, believed some Jewish things and other Jewish things they did not believe. And they were always striving to get us, uh, stroving against one another, fighting against one another. And you found that largely among Christianity. That's one thing that we've definitely brought over from the Jewish culture is that we still argue. Now, what Jesus said was that he was, 
He was him. If you didn't experience Christ, you wouldn't go to heaven. And that was uh, that was very offensive of them <clears throat> that they had to experience Christ, and they didn't. They didn't quite understand that. He says, "I am the bread of life. You've got to eat me to to experience me." And they did not get that at all. So after he used the example of "I am the bread of the life." Then he went a little deeper with them. In verse 52, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Now, again, they were not understanding. Uh, the next time you talk to someone concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, and they don't understand, don't get mad, because you wouldn't either if it wasn't for the goodness of God. Yeah, right. And just pray for them. Uh, leave the word of God there and, and move along your way because you're never going to make them see it in the spirit because that's a spiritual thing. Uh, you might get them to uh, perceive it cognitively, but that'll do them no spiritual good. Uh, it, it, won't, it won't help them a bit. And so we find the Jews were just this way. And if you remember what did Nicodemus say the first time the Lord Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. How can man be born again? How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He thought of it on a carnal, physical level. And you know what? He wasn't saved that night. Uh, I think he was at one point. We hear him mentioned three separate times. One time he went to the Lord Jesus' defense in Matthew chapter 7. And then in another time, uh, we see that he helps in the burying of the Lord Jesus' body. Uh, and, and so I believe he was saved, but it was a hard thing in the beginning. He's saying, How, th this is an impossibility. And that, that is the flesh's natural stance on the Word of God is this is impossible. Verse 53 then Jesus said unto him, them, excuse me, barely, barely, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now, we have to experience Christ to this level. We have to consume. We have to, everything about him we must embrace. He was sinless. He, he was the very living Son of God. He was God in the flesh. Right. Amen. And you, you, you have to embrace that. Mm. And you know what? It's hard. Uh, I don't know that I was always taught that. I, I, as a boy, it seemed like most preachers taught it as two distinctions, God and Jesus. But they're one and the same and same in the one. Right. Yeah. Right. And you've got to experience him. You have to, you have to fully take it on your own. And, and that's a difficult thing. And, and uh, he, what, what the real message of this whole thing is, is I am life. I am the giver and the taker of life. If you want spiritual life, it must be experienced by me. That's the whole text of this verse, the whole meaning of it. And you have to consume me completely. Now, what is, what is difficult here, uh, I really believe these verses teach all or none. You can't halfway do it. You either experience Christ fully or you don't experience him at all. <coughs> and, 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 you know, we live in a day and age where we like to have one hand over here in Christ and the other hand over here in the world. You can't experience Christ like that in, in that, in that <coughs> position of hanging to both. Verse 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have, hath, have, same word, eternal life. They already have it. They, it's not that they're going to obtain it by, by this uh, current substitution doctrine. They already have it. He that eateth, and, and so it, it is a hallmark of the redeemed, not an action to be redeemed. It's a hallmark of the redeemed. Those that completely experience Christ. And see, when you experience him, he becomes far more important than your children, than your spouse, 
than, than even the breath of life itself. He says, when you experience me that way, you've got me. And that was very, very offensive to the people that were around him. Yeah. In other words, if you don't experience me that way, you don't experience me at all. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that's a very difficult thing. In the modern day, people want both. And we see that that's not a new desire. That's been the desire of man uh, since the fallen Adam, wanting, wanting the world and wanting God. Two little laws in the Garden of Eden, and they had to break one. They wanted the world, and they wanted God. And they quickly learned it did not work out that way. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed. Now, let's think about this a little graphically for a moment because it is offensive to some, and we're talking about uh, words that offend. Can you imagine eating a human being? Uh, that, that is beyond my comprehension. I mean, it truly is. I remember I was just a boy when I worked for the Amlet service. I thought I was grown then, but I wasn't. And uh, I worked direct. I know the boy's name. I won't say it because we're bug testing. But he was turning up Bumpus Mill Road, and he had a really jacked-up, high-lift uh, truck. And he turned too quick, and that dude rode on him. And he had his arm out like this, cut it off right there. And I remember picking it up, and it was so cold. And when, when it cut off, it did like this. It just crinkled, and it was stiff. And I, did, I just did not want to touch it. And could you imagine eating that? That's offensive, ain't it? I hope it's offensive to you. I hope it doesn't, you find, I hope you don't find it appealing. Well, that's, that's the attitude a lot of people have to Christ. They don't find him appealing. And you know, if it weren't for the goodness of God, you wouldn't either. Yeah. You wouldn't either. And, and so what, what he was asking them to do and how that he wanted them to experiencing to experience himself was offensive. And, and it was, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the uh, last day, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth again, present tense birth, dwelleth in me, and I in him. But again, it's a very, uh, it's a very offending illustration, is it not? When you, when you begin to really think about literally drinking someone's blood and, and eating another person's flesh, that's appalling to our flesh, is it not? Uh, almost to the point of disgust. So, what do you find offensive? Now this one I think is kind of easy. I know you understand the spiritual applications and you don't find this offensive. But what scriptures do offend you? Well, we'll, we'll read the rest of this in your hearing and you can be thinking about that. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he, has, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me, by the Word of God, by what the Word of God says, by his rules. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, but he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So, uh, while certainly some of us could take offense, uh, he says, did this offend you? Does, it, did, did this upset you? Does, it, did, does this gnaw you a little bit? Now, we've all had scripture, if we would be honest, that just did not set right with us. You know, and, and it doesn't anymore. In fact, I embrace it and love it. But I remember the very first time, and Brother Downs brought this out, 
And I just had to go go home and read it again and kind of hit this old nog in a little bit. It's when, and it's very simple. But Esau have I hated. That was against my flesh. I was like, it's impossible. You know why? Because I'd heard the false doctrine that God is love so long that I believed it. God is love, but He's also righteousness and holiness. And He cannot defile Himself any way. He hated Himself. He certainly did. And it, it offended me for a while. And then I had to come to this, and you will too, with any offense of Scripture, you have to remember God is always right. Yeah. We, 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 have, we have no dog in the hunt, as my mother used to say, because God is always right. Now, it may, it may hurt the flesh, it may move the flesh, but at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge and give God the glory that He is always right, and this Word will always magnify His name, whether we like it or not. Remember, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is this, and, and my ways, my ways are not your ways. And so at the end of the day, it might be, it might not be appealing to us, but you know what? If I understand the word of God as I think I do, it brings him much glory and much honor, and what I think really doesn't matter. Right? right? And, and, and so we find that I think if we if we're to be uh, sound believers, sometimes we have to we have to find these things that bother us. Joshua chapter eight. Uh, Joshua chapter eight, <coughs> and we're going to begin reading in verse twenty-two. Now, uh, if you know your Bible, they had gone up against Jericho and won. They came up against Ai, and at first they were sent running. They went back to Ai again. After they had gotten right with God, there was sin in the camp, is what the Lord God said. And then they came out as victors. So Joshua 8, verse 22 and the other issue, and, and the other issued out of the city against them, so that they were in the midst of the Israel on this side and some on that side, and they smote them, and they, they let none of them remain or escape. Now, we're going to read on in a minute, but I want you to see, and if you write in your Bible, it says they let none escape. In another, uh, say, as the Lord is telling them how to go occupy the land, they said, they said, kill, the Lord God said, kill everybody. Kill men, women, and children. That's offensive, is it not? Can you imagine one of these little ones here? That, that's what they were talking about. You know what? That makes no sense to me. A little child dying at the decree of the Almighty. That, that's offensive, is it not? Well, let me tell you this. It's offensive to the flesh. Yeah. But it's a spirit. Think about the one, the one group they let slide. Remember that? They said, we'll be your servants. Mm -hmm. Caused them problems. Still causing them problems today. See, God's plan is always best, no matter how offensive to the flesh. But I, I'm using this one as an example for y'all so that I, I'll be included in the group, so to speak. That's an uh, that was a very offensive scripture to me. And, and you know, you might, you, not, you may not be like me, but in me, uh, I will at least acknowledge when I'm wrong, I do. And I still have to be very, very prayerful when I read this to understand that this, as seemingly uncanny as it can be, was for God's glory. Verse 23, 
And the king of Ai, they took a line and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them. And, and when they were all fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all Israelites returned unto Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all fell that day, both of men and women were 12,000, even all the men of Ai. And, Je and Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear until he had destroyed, he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. You know what all means? All means all. Every one of them. Every last person. Now that may not offend you in the flesh, but it does me. Like I said, I can't comprehend it being the will of the Almighty to kill a child. But apparently it was. Yeah. And see, we need to know and understand there are going to be scriptures like this that come along in your day and you're just going to go, what do I do with that? It'll be offensive. And you know what I found about people who live on false doctrine? They're, those are the ones God will bring, I mean, that they'll bring out to you. How do you explain this? What are you going to say about that? Right. You know, there is a verse in the Bible in the New Testament that says that we can be baptized for <laughs> uh, our previous generations, man. I tell you what, you want to make a you want to make a Mormon walk the aisle, just throw that one out on. But let me take it out of context. Read that. You know what? For you, you know why I got scriptural baptism for because of not for Donna's benefit because Donna taught me about it. That's the for the Bible speaking of. Not for, and, and you know what? You know what she did? Because her previous generations, her mother and her dad taught her about it. That's the for. The, but they love to do that. You know what? We just need to accept the Bible for what it says. You, you, you use some genuine understanding. You, you use what the Lord God has given us. And so we find no matter the complication of the Scripture, it is what it is. And we must, we must rejoice in it. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Brother Jared was running in, and I were all around my scriptures. Uh, Matthew 7, verse 21. Matthew uh, 7, verse 21. The Bible says... Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter unto the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's a hard one to deal with, is it not? You know what? I, I meet some very nice people in my job. Kind, loving people. And I fully know what they believe. And if they believe what they say they do... There is no way that they're among the redeemed. That makes that seem unfair. Did we not prophesy? That just means preach. I often think about other groups. I'm going to stand up in that day. Campbellite people, did we not? Did we not minister in their name? And we'll see that the 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 Response to that is simply going to be, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Does it seem right? Does it seem hard? Does it seem harsh? And, and maybe I'm cruel. This one don't bother me, but I brought it up because I know a lot of people it does bother. We all can't be right. Now that's the New Age theology. We all 
are just going the same way and we're all doing different things, but we're going to get there together. No, 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 no. There are but one way is what the Bible says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Singular one way. They're wrong. And again, I may be bad, I may have the wrong attitude, but that don't bother me a bit. You know what? When I approach somebody that's steeped in false doctrine, I won't be ugly, but I will tell them scripturally why they're wrong. Yeah. <coughs> but, you know, think about a lost person. Think about a lost person. They come to you and say, you know what? Miss um, Smith is such a godly woman. She wears long hair all the time and rolls around on the floor in her skirt and say, well, Miss Smith is messed up. Miss Smith is a holiness woman in word only. That's offensive to the flesh. You think, you think that person that's lost is going to go, oh, yeah, man, I get that. You're, you're so right. No. Oh, it's offensive. A singular way unto glory is Christ. And that's offensive. That's offensive to me. Now, there are many, many doctrines in that book that's offensive to the flesh. I picked out two that seemingly bothers a lot of people. But what bothers you? Which is your nudge? And we all have one, right? We all have one. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'd like to do just kind of what I want to do. Well, uh, the Bible uh, does not teach that, first of all. Um, I think it, let, let me look. Second uh, Corinthians. I hope I'm in the right, because this one I'm just bringing out. Second <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, uh, verse 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. The Bible says this, O ye Corinthians, Greek nation, a nation of many gods. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is opened unto you. Our heart is enlarged with his compassion and his growth. Are you not straight? Ye are not straightened in us but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now, if you your bowels are redeemed, that was what they thought to be the center of man. Uh, your spirit, your soul, you, if you're really straightened up, if you're aligned with your redeemed nature, you'll take whatever the Scripture says. You'll take it for, and it may not be pleasant to the flesh, it may not be uh, something that's uh, 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 something that is inviting to the flesh, but you'll take it. You're not straightened in us, but you're straightened in your own bowels. Now, for a recompense in the same, I speak unto my children, be also enlarged. He wanted them to grow. He wanted them to progress. And he gave them some key things to do that. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, that, that bothers a lot of people. That means you can't marry just anybody you want. It means that you can't make oath or covenant with this world. It, it, it means that uh, you have to be choosy in your spouse. It means you can't join the lodge and make an oath or a covenant to them. And when, when you go down to the courthouse, when they swear you in, you can't say, I swear by God, according to the scriptures. You, you can say, I'll tell you the truth. I promise to tell you the truth. But see, when you get into covenants, you've got to be very, very careful. And, and so uh, we are to be a different people. We are strangers and pilgrims. We, we are to stick out. You know what? That is not a popular doctrine today. Yeah. It really isn't. Even among our type of Baptists, I see it slipping and slipping and slipping more and more as the days go by. We're to be different. We are to look different. Our clothing is to be different. From the very beginning covenant with God's people, they were always different. 
Why, why should we question that? Well, I can tell you why we question it. It hurts the flesh. It's offensive to the flesh. Because we want to be like the world. We want to act like the world. We want to present like the world. And that way you get kudos and pats and pat, pat on the back. Ye be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Now this is, a, this is an answerable question, believe it or not. What kind of fellowship do you have with lost people? Well, how's the weather today? I hear it's going to rain about three this afternoon. <coughs> very, very basic stuff, right? Just very common things. Now, if you go deeper and you want to be invited over their house and you want to have a good time with them, you will compromise something. Uh, you'll compromise what you do, what you wear, what you say. If you want that deeper fellowship with them, you can get it, but it comes at a price. And, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, uh, what this says is right. It may be offensive to the flesh, but this is the right way. Verse 15, what concord or agreement have Christ with Belial? Nothing. We have to be different. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel or an unbeliever? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of God, of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, because of, this is the standard, Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. You know what? That's really offensive to a lot today. I want to be like the world. I don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> Unfortunately, if this standard says it, your opinion doesn't matter. That's hard, isn't it? That, that's a difficult thing to go. That, you know, well, my friends are doing this and my friends are doing that. Let me tell you, dear friend, if it's against the Word of God, they're not your friends. They're outside the group. They're, they're outside the love of the mighty God of heaven. You do not need them. But man, that's offensive to the flesh, is it not? Mm. Especially when it's people you love. Mm. I literally think of my sister every day. Uh, I think, and, and I don't understand this, and maybe some of you others that have siblings that have gone can understand this, but I think I miss her now more than when she first died 11 years ago. And, uh, but you know, it was such a joy when she was a member here, and we enjoyed she was disciplined, it was just different. <coughs> it wasn't the same anymore. And as much as I loved you, I had to go with what the Bible said. And it's hard. It's very difficult. It, it, it's not a pleasant thing. But it's good for me. It, it, it's good for me in the spirit. It'll hurt your flesh and it, it'll whoop you upside one side and down the other, but it's good for the inner man. Do I always understand it? No, but I do know that it's right. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So if we get it out there in the world, there's a huge problem. Do I believe? Do I believe that you're lost again? No. But I will question your salvation. If you can live outside the will of the Almighty, something is terribly wrong. Yeah. You know why? Because one of these two girls, and I hope Sarah's past that point in her life, but uh, Bella gets out of line, you know what? She's got it coming. And if one of God's children gets out of line, 
You got it coming from a lot worse than me. Right? And if they can meander on and nothing happens, there seems to be no judgment, there seems to be uh, no punishment from the Almighty, all I can say is I don't know that you're saved or not. Scary thought, is it not? Mm. You know, when Judy and Mike were disciplined from our church, Mike was dead in a year and Judy was dead in two years. That's pretty scary, is it not? Our Lord's a good disciplinarian, isn't he? Those things are hard on the flesh, are they not? Make you say, what? what? <laughs> How could that be? Well, I can't say I understand it all, but I can't say I believe it. I certainly believe it. All the Word of God is good for me. And as difficult as it is, I always <laughs> want to embrace it. Verse 18. And I will be a father unto you. A father is a provider. A father is a disciplinarian. A father is a protector. He says, you do this. You, you leave it all behind. And accept what I say. And I'm going to protect you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to encourage you. And I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So this morning I would definitely review within myself what I find offensive of this blessed old book. And there are verses in there that will offend. And you know what I have found is somewhat at least based on personality. Because some things, I'm like, well, certainly that's the way it ought to be. But again, when you get talking about little children and the decree of God is to let them die, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. But it's right. It's good. And we see when Israel didn't do it, the results were horrible. Yeah. So what is, what is that little stickler scripture <clears throat> that you're like going, I just can't go to that. Is it one that says, <laughs> and he is fitted, it says Esau is fitted unto wrath. Uh, he, he was decreed <coughs> for destruction. <coughs> vessels of wrath and vessels of honor. How bother you? That one really don't bother me. I think it brings glory to the Lord God. But some people find that as a as an issue, do they not? What what bothers you? I think that's a very important question to answer, don't you? And that way you can study it. And if you belong unto the Lord, at the end of the study, you accept exactly what God says. 